Finger Picking or Finger Style Lesson 9 The Troubled Heart by Sad Fantasy You'll probably need the tablature to follow along with this tutorial and you'll find it at ebooksforguitar.com and click on Lessons and then Right-Handed or Left-Handed, whichever one you need. Hopefully you've covered most of the groundwork for this tune in the previous tutorial. However, if you haven't, you might need to go through that. The link will be down below in the description. This tune can be broken down into two main themes, so we'll look at theme one first. Now, looking at theme one, if you look more closely at the first bar, you'll see it repeats at the beginning of each line and two places in the middle of the lines. So in total, six places in the whole of theme one. So it's fair to say that this is nearly half of the first theme. Let's just learn this bar on its own in isolation first. At the beginning of the first bar, we run straight up an A minor with our primary, index, middle, annular finger. And then we slide to the fifth fret without repicking. We've actually covered that part of the first bar in the previous exercises. However, to complete the first bar, we keep the first finger on the fifth fret and roll it across to play the fifth fret on the top E string. Then we play the seventh fret with the third finger and the eighth fret with the fourth finger. Let's hear that done twice with a metronome at 120 beats per minute. Let's see and hear that done again, and as usual, if you can, try playing along with it, otherwise you can pause the video and try practicing it. Right, let's do the rest of the first line. And we've already got the first and third bars, so we need to learn to play the second and fourth bars. And I could actually summarise these both bars by play the notes with your third finger. The most difficult of these two bars is the second bar, because you've got to go between the eighth fret on the top E string and the third fret on the bottom E string. However, the fourth bar is very easy because you're already in the right position. It's just getting the finger picking pattern correct. Let's see and hear the first two bars being played. Let's see and hear that again, and if you can, try playing along. Let's see and hear the last two bars of line one being played. Let's see and hear that again. Right, let's put that together and let's see and hear the whole of the first line being played.
Let's see and hear that again, and if you can, try playing along with it. Otherwise, it might be worth pausing the video here and just practicing the first line until you're fairly comfortable with it. Right, let's move on to the second line. And you'll notice straight away, you already know the first bar. However, the next two bars we need to look at. Especially bar three, where we introduce a new variation of the D minor chord. But before we do that, let's have a look at the first two bars. Here they are played at 120 beats per minute. You'll notice to achieve the 10th fret, we have to slide the 4th finger up from the 8th fret. However, for the rest of this bar, you can remain in that position. So you play the 8th fret with the 2nd finger and the 7th fret with the 1st finger. Let's see and hear that again. Right, let's look at the third bar now, where we introduce this new D minor. And it's played with the first finger on the fifth fret of the top E string and the second finger on the sixth fret of the B string and the third finger on the seventh fret of the G string. Now the bass is played on the open D string. So try to play that a couple of times before we go any further. Unfortunately, once you've got the D minor, you've only got half of that bar. The second half of the bar involves playing the tune with the little finger and the annular and index finger. Let's see and hear that done a couple of times. Let's see and hear that being played again, and if you think you can, try play along with it. However, don't worry if you can't. At this stage now, it may take you a couple of days or even a week to master one small part of a tune like this, but it's well worth the effort. Once you're at least happy you understand this last bar, we can look at the final bar of the second line. And you'll be happy to know it's a really easy A minor. Even though the final bar is very easy, let's see and hear it being played twice.
Let's see and hear that one more time. So now let's hear the complete second line. Let's see and hear that again, and if you can, play along. Right, let's put the first and the second line together and let's hear that played. Let's see and hear that again, and this time, if you can, play along with it. If you're still having trouble with this bit, it might be worth pausing the video and practicing the first two lines until you feel reasonably happy with them. You'll be happy to know that line 3 is identical to line 1, so all you have to do is play line 1 again. Let's do that as a revision exercise. Right, let's look at the last line of theme 1. And you'll notice straight away that the first bar is one we've already covered several times. And it's the bar that repeats itself six times in the whole of theme 1. The rest of this line is very similar to the second line of theme 1. However, there are some glaring differences. The biggest of which being the final bar and this is a new shape of A minor we haven't looked at yet. So let's look at this shape of A minor before we go any further. To play this shape of A minor, you have to cover the fifth fret of the top three strings, that's the G, B and top E string, with the first finger in the fifth fret. However, the root or the base of the chord is the open A. Therefore, you've got a note in the middle that you shouldn't play, and that's the D string. So, to practice this chord initially, we'll just strum the top three strings. So, let's hear that done now, four times.
Let's now see and hear that bar done with the finger picking. I'll play it twice with the bars rest between them. Let's see and hear that again, and if you think you can, try playing along with it. If you're having trouble holding down three strings with one finger, you might find that your finger is too crooked, in which case try to straighten it out a bit. This might involve moving your thumb around the neck of the guitar towards the floor. Or make sure your first finger is parallel with the frets. If it isn't, you might find that you're overlapping the frets, and therefore you need to rotate your whole hand round so that your first finger becomes parallel with the frets, or at 6 o'clock. If you still find you can't cover the three strings or it's hit and miss and sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't, it might be just that you need to build up the strength in your finger and therefore this will only come with practice. So keep practicing it even with dead notes and what you'll find is it'll eventually just clear up by itself for no apparent reason and I've seen this time and time again with my own students. Right, let's go back to the beginning of the last line of theme one and play the first two bars. You'll notice that in the second bar you have to move from the 10th fret to the 12th fret by sliding up the 4th finger and then you return to the 10th fret using the 2nd finger. So let's see those two bars again. Let's see and hear that again, and as usual, if you can, play along with it. Otherwise, it might be worth pausing the video and practicing it. Looking at the third bar of this line, you'll notice you're using the new shape of D minor. And again, you're using the fourth finger to play the melody. So, let's see and hear that done twice. Let's see and hear that again. Right, let's bring all this together and play the last line of theme one. Let's see and hear that again, and if you can, play along with it.
Right, let's hear the entire of theme one. Let's see and hear that again, and if you think you can, try playing along with it. Otherwise, this is a good place to pause the video, or even stop it, and practice theme 1 until you're happy with it. Don't worry if it takes you a week or more, it's better to take it slowly and get it properly than to try and speed through it, because what you do then is you just get confused and lose track of what you've learnt. Theme 2 of The Troubled Heart by Sad Fantasy. Let's see and hear the whole thing done first before we learn it. You'll be pleased to know that this theme is a lot easier than theme 1 in my opinion, and most of the techniques that you'll be using in this we've already covered in the exercises building up to this tune, so you should find it relatively easy. If you take a quick general overview of this theme, you'll notice that it's basically made up of repeats with slight variations in the finger picking. So for example, the first two lines are more or less identical to the second two lines, and the first two bars are identical to the second two bars, which are very similar to the third line. 
So, once you've got the basic idea of what's going on in this part of the tune, the rest should be fairly self-explanatory. Let's see and hear the first line of theme two. Let's take a detailed look at the first bar of this line. First you play an A minor as we've done previously. However then you pull off the first finger to the open string. Then you put the first finger back and re-pick it. And then you play the fourth finger in the third fret of the B string and slide it to the fifth fret without re-picking it. Finally, you go from the 4th finger in the 5th fret to the 1st finger in the 1st fret of the B string. This is a big gap, so you might have to practice it a few times before you perfect it. Let's see and hear that done a couple of times. Let's see and hear that again. To play the second bar, we simply use a G6. And then by repeating the first two bars, we have the whole of the first line. So let's hear that played. Let's see and hear that played again, and as usual, if you can, try playing along with it. Let's see and hear the second line of theme two. You'll notice with the first bar of the second line that you're doing a very similar movement as you did in the first bar of line one, except this time you're working from the D minor open chord. The rest of the line is just repeats and open chords. So let's hear that again. And if you can, try playing along with it. Let's bring the first two lines of theme two together and then you can practice them until you're fairly comfortable with them. So let's see and hear the first two lines of theme two being played.
Right, let's see and hear that done again. The second two lines of theme two are very similar to the first two lines and therefore there's no new techniques to learn. The only difference is very slight differences in the finger picking pattern. So keep your eyes open for that. And the final line of theme two is simply an open A minor. So let's hear the last three lines of theme two being played through. Let's see and hear that again, and as usual, try playing along with it if you think you're ready. Right, let's hear the entire of theme two. Once you think you're ready, let's bring theme one and theme two together and let's see and hear the entire tune played through.
Let's see and hear that again. And if you think you're ready, try playing along with it. As with previous tutorials, I've been using a metronome so you could play along. However, this tune sounds just as good in free time without a metronome. And that can give you some flexibility where you might struggle with chord changes, but it'll still sound good. So don't feel you should be tied to a metronome, as this tune probably sounds better without one. To make it more interesting to practice, I'll upload an orchestral backing for you to practice the tune along with. If you enjoyed this tutorial and want to see more like it, please like and subscribe so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. If you need the tablature for this song, you'll find it at ebooksforguitar.com and you'll find the tablature for the song there, as well as all my other tutorials, and they're free to view online. Thank you for watching.